all of us here come out from this event going home appreciating more our those talented people who really added a lot to our life as Arabs, those poets and those artists. And we are celebrating one of the greatest tonight. Thank you so much and you. enjoy your evening. You. From Stanford University, uh, Professor Alexander Key, Comparative Literature at the Division of Literatures, Cultures, and Languages. Dr. Khalid Obeid, Lecturer and Coordinator of the Arabic Program at the Stanford Language Center and Dr. Ramzi Salti, lecturer for the Arabic program at the Stanford Language Center. Thank you, guys. There's a lot of language in the Arabic And I think that also this um, to stress, all I would like to do is to stress the naturalness and the confidence and the untroubled poetic voice that Jaudat Haydar has, and in the celebration of the English poetry of Jaudat Haydar, that we are grateful to our colleagues from the Lebanese American University to bring to us. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. I was chosen tonight to read some of um, uh, Jaudat Haidar's poetry. This is Jaudat Haidar speaking about his own poetry. So this is not a poem by Jaudat Haidar. This is him talking about his poetry, courtesy of Leila Sisi. Fi ashari sukun falsafi wa muhawalat ittirab min al haya al ruhiya al taamuliya. عبر النور الباطن النابع من خلال الحقائق والوقائع فلست من هواة الهروب من الواقع والاستغراق في الخيال وإنما من الراغبين بأن تبلغ أشعاري مرحلة الكونية عبر التحسس والإدراك التي يعكسها اتساع مدى أفكاري ومواضيع قصائدي this is uh, Jaudat Haidar in a nutshell. Uh, the beauty of his poems in English we were reminiscent a little bit for me, Alexander of Zubran, in a sense. Uh, his emphasis on nature. He, uh, he was an environmentalist before the word was popular, very much against pollution. He was a fierce advocate for women's rights when that was still a very controversial. privilege to be here today and to be able to um, introduce the work of the Lebanese poet Jaudat Haider and proved in his um, artistic and creative response through his poetry that uh, there are no boundaries, barriers, identity um, sort of uh, barriers or, or state barriers that can stand between the movement of an idea and a set of values, which in this case has been shared between an individual in India fighting for the independence of the Indian Indians um, from British uh, colonial rule to the shores of the Mediterranean where an individual poet, Jaudat Haider, came to share these very same values. Um, Jaudat Haider lived from 1905 to 2006, um, so he had a lifetime of over a hundred years. And in those hundred years, he witnessed many extraordinary events of world history, from the Ottoman and French mandates to the world wars, World War I and II, to the civil wars in Lebanon, 1958 and 1975, and 9-11. Um, and he also witnessed the partition of India, and in some sense, the tragedy that, bef that came to befall the people who suffered in that partition, who lost their lives and their homes. So he, his response in terms of his artistic uh, output as a poet um, really reflects this sense of shared values and the fact that they um, endured through all the challenges of world history. 
his greatest wish, Jaudat Haider's greatest wish, was to see humanity be at peace with itself and also its environment. And I think these themes are very much woven into his poetry. The piece he preaches is one that starts from within, within us, within the human being. Peace is really inner peace. Each one of us has to look for, and it begins with forgiveness and ends with tolerance. And I think that, that is what humanity is, and that is what makes Haider its voice, the voice of humanity. from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. We are very pleased to present this program on the poetry of Jawad Hadar in a transnational framework. First, I'd like to welcome our speaker, Dr. Carol Bada. My talk today will be focusing on the works of the Lebanese poet, Jaudat Haider, who was born in 1905 and passed away in 2006, placing his poetry in a transnational framework in order to analyze how such a framework can be used to link, for example, the U.S. and the Arab world in ways that exceed and trouble neat divisions of here and there, the West and the East. I would argue that the poems of Jaudat Haidar provide us with an important lens to consider a vision that straddles multiple national locations without necessarily taking on ethnic or hyphenated identities such as Arab American, for example. Department of English, and he's going to be the master of ceremonies for the for this presentation. Great, I understand what I have to say. Thank you. 